We welcome you this evening to our online carol service. Feltham Evangelical Church is welcoming you as we celebrate the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ into the world. Many years ago, there was a controversy about people moving around. Today, it's a controversy about people being restricted in their movement those years ago it was a forced movement a forced movement uh, that forced mary with her husband joseph to move to bethlehem to give birth to her firstborn son god arranged it that way and the lord jesus the eternal son of god came into the world and was received into the family of Mary and Joseph. And we celebrate his arrival once again this Christmas season. We're going to sing our first hymn now. We're going to raise our chorus of thanksgiving and praise and sing one of the great Christmas hymns, Hark <coughs> the Herald Angels Sing. The hymn should come. Yeah. <laughs>
That was a taste of real Feltham as well there. Uh, we as a church were out in the town centre last Tuesday evening singing some carols. And so that is some footage from our being able to sing out to our God. We're going to pray now because we want to ask God to be with us significantly in this time. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we are glad to acknowledge that you have sent your son to be the savior of the world. And we are presently here in this world at this time. And we do pray, oh God, that we would really know what it is to receive the savior the Lord Jesus Christ, into our lives as Mary and Joseph received him into their family. May we know the significance for ourselves that the Lord Jesus has come. So be with us at this time of uncertainty where many of us are, are troubled and uh, concerned about the situations around us. We do pray tonight for all of our circumstances. We pray for uh, the leaders in our government, that they would know wisdom to, uh, to know how to respond to these present difficulties. We pray and give thanks for all those engaged in caring ser services at this present time, oh God. And so we commit ourselves to you, and we do pray now that we would know real significance in this time together, that you would show us afresh the whole reality of the Lord Jesus Christ, your precious beloved son, coming into this world on a mission, a mission to bring a glory to you and to bring people into a right relationship with yourself. And so we pray, we give thanks, committing our time to you in the Lord Jesus name. Amen. We will continue to sing. And we're going to sing our second carol now. And this one is going to be sung by uh, Laura Henderson, who's a member of the church here, and Gabriella Claude, who was recently baptized, confessing how she had received the Lord Jesus Christ into her life as her Lord and Savior. So similarly, the uh, carol will come up on the screen. Please feel free to join in at home. Sing uh, as loud as you want in your own home, uh, so to speak. And uh, we would want to acknowledge God in this, our second carol. Infant holy, infant lowly, for his bed a cattle store, oxen low. felt to me that was a quite outstanding rendition of that beautiful carol uh, thanks to laura and gabriella for bringing us that beautiful sense of praise and thanksgiving in that song we're going to continue now 
And we're going to read of somebody who quite literally received the Lord Jesus into their life situation, an old man called Simeon. And we're going to read from the Bible. We at Feltham Evangelical Church believe the Bible is God's word, revealing God and telling us all of what he wants us to know. So we're going to read from Luke in chapter 2, and we're reading from verse 25 to 35. And Rachel Boughton, who is one of the members of the church here, is now going to come and read this passage from the Word of God. This is Luke chapter 2, verses 25 to 35. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and this man was righteous and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he'd seen the Lord's Christ. And he came in the spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought him the child Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law, he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation that you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for the glory to your people Israel. And his father and his mother marveled what was said about him. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is appointed for the fall and rising of many in Israel and for a sign that is opposed. And a sword will pierce through your own soul also, so that thoughts from many hearts may be revealed. This is the word of the Lord. Uh, thank you, Rachel. We will sing our third carol now in the bleak midwinter. Uh, similarly, this was sung on Tuesday when we were out in the town centre. Please feel free to join in at home.
that we might give our hearts and our lives to our Lord Jesus and receive him into our, our situations of real life now. We're now going to have a, an account of how somebody came to give, uh, give themselves to the Lord Jesus Christ, give their hearts into his, into his keeping how they received the Lord Jesus Christ into their lives. We're now going to hear from Uju Daniel, who is uh, one of the members of the church here, and she is going to tell of how she became a Christian, how she received the Lord Jesus Christ. I grew up in a Christian home, and so every Sunday, my parents made sure we went to church. And also, we also attended some weekly church programs. And that was how it continued until I got to the age of 16. And at that time, I realized that going to church programs wasn't enough. I was attending church every Sunday, but there was something that was not right. I did see some Christians then in my church, and they looked so happy and so different. And I was wondering why their life was that different. And so I continued going to church until we had a crusade in my church. And I decided to attend the crusade. And on that day, in that crusade, I met with Jesus and I gave my life to Christ. And I was transformed. I went home from that crusade that day with the joy of my salvation. I was filled with joy. And when I got home, all I wanted to talk about was the new experience I had. And I started sharing that experience with my family, telling them the good news about our Lord Jesus Christ. And the following day, as I went out, all I did was to share this good news to anyone that wanted to listen. And I told them then that it's not something that is just going to stop. That is an experience which is for life. And years later, my family members also came to know the Lord, some of them. So Jesus Christ is the only one that can save and deliver us from all our sins and give us that life, which is the perfect life that we live we need to live knowing jesus christ is knowing peace and knowing him is knowing joy your blessing truly that is what we want to invite you into knowing the peace of God through our Lord Jesus Christ like Uju has received through Jesus who is Lord. Now we are Feltham Evangelical Church and uh, it's good that you've been able to connect in with us tonight. We are here in the uh, Seltham, uh, center of Feltham and it's our privilege to be here to serve the Lord Jesus Christ and make him known uh, in this community. If you want to know more about the church, even things that you'll hear about tonight, please get in touch with us through the email address or the Facebook page. Even give us a call on the telephone to the church building here. Uh, we, want to be help we want to help you in your journey to know God through our Savior Jesus. On Christmas Day, we are here for a service at half past 10, and you'd be most welcome to join us on that occasion in the church building here. We're going to sing a further carol now. We're going to sing one of the uh, great classic carols, uh, revealing the 
great theme of our Lord Jesus coming, and that is Silent Night. Again, come up on your screen. Please feel free to join in. Once again, now we're going to hear from the Bible. And over this Christmas season in the church here, we have been considering some of the issues that are brought up in one of the parts of the Bible, John's Gospel in chapter 1 and verses 1 to 18. And Abraham Dodd, who is a member of the church here, is now going to read this passage to us. John chapter 1, verses 1 to 18. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not was anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. The true light which gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world and the world was made through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to his own and his own people did not receive him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we have seen his glory, glory as of the only son from the father, full of grace and mercy. John bore witness about him and cried out. This was he of whom I said, he who comes after me ranks before me because he was before me. 
For from his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, the only God, who is at the Father's side. He has made known him known. Amen. Thanks, Abraham. O little town of Bethlehem is our fifth carol. And this is one that has been put together as a, as a montage of different ones connected with the church here uh, singing this hymn. So please enjoy, please join in, O little town of Bethlehem. trust you enjoyed that uh, Feltham Evangelical Church coming together to sing in montage O Little Town of Bethlehem. We now want to take some time to look at a part of that passage that we read from John's Gospel and chapter one and to consider the receiving of the Lord Jesus Christ into our own lives. We thought about how the Lord Jesus came into the womb of Mary and was born uh, to Mary and Joseph, received into their family. That man, Simeon, he received the Lord Jesus into his arms and 
really appreciated how he was the great salvation of God. Then Uju has given testimony to how coming to faith in Jesus Christ changed her life those years ago. But what about us this Christmas season? And what a time it is, isn't it? What a time of uncertainty, time of difficulty, time of fear and, and trouble for so many of us. Even all the changes that many of us have had to work through as a result of the government announcement yesterday. Well, I want us this evening time to think about the biggest of issues. I don't want to uh, scorn at the reality of the things that we're going through at the moment, not at all. But I want us to go to the biggest and most, most profound perspective, and that is the perspective of ourselves before God in the light of forever. Ourselves before God in the light of forever. We are truly here. God is truly God. And we are a people, individuals who are created to be forever. Will we be with God, blessed forever? Or will we be away from God in hell, suffering forever? Christmas is the season where the great offer goes out that we would receive new life, eternal life, through Jesus Christ. That's the great offer. Well, Christmas is a time, isn't it, traditionally, of the giving and receiving of gifts. And when we are giving gifts to people, the expectation is that they would receive them. Now, when they're received, they may get a uh, they may be received with different amounts of appreciation, depending upon how much the person receiving likes the present. But there is a receiving of the present, a giving and receiving. Well, Christmas will tell us that God has given. God has given his son into this world. God has given him to be the savior, the one to rescue us from the mess of our lives into the glorious purpose of his life in our lives. The question is, will we receive? That's the question for us all this Christmas season, this evening, December 20th, 2020. Will we receive? Will we welcome this Lord Jesus Christ into our lives? Earlier in the, uh, in the passage in John and chapter 1, uh, we, we find out that the Lord Jesus Christ, he is the word. That tells us that he is the Lord God who has come into this world to reveal God. And we need to have God revealed to us. Most wonderfully, in the Lord Jesus, he's revealed to us the true God. He's also the light who has come into the world, the light that shines beyond all other lights, the light, the light who exposes our darkness. Let's get real tonight. We're aware of a lot of darkness around us at this time, physically, yes, but even in the world, there's so much darkness and trouble, and it's as if people really don't know what to do. But there is light. The Lord Jesus shines a light into our souls because there is darkness in our souls. That's a big issue we need to deal with. Our turning from God, our mess, our rebellion against God. But also wonderfully, the Lord Jesus is the one who he, also, he restores us into light and life because at the cross of Calvary, he takes our darkness, dies our death, and in his light and life, he's raised from the dead the third day. This is the good news of the Lord Jesus coming into the world. He comes as the word. He comes as the light. He comes to bring salvation and rescue and hope. So what do we need to happen 
at the Chris this Christmas season. What needs to happen? You may have lots of views about that. You may be very, very frustrated at this time, and I can understand that. But what I want to urge upon you is simply this. You need to receive the Lord Jesus Christ into your life. You need to welcome him for who he is. Not some, not some version of Jesus Christ that you might want to dream up or that other people might want to present to you, but the true uh, Lord Jesus Christ who is revealed in the Bible. And it's him you want to receive. And you start off by realizing your need. And then you go on to the longing to receive. Imagine tomorrow. Imagine tomorrow at home, uh, you get a problem with your plumbing in your central heating. And you make arrangement for a plumber to come to sort out your central heating. And the plumber comes, who you have duly arranged to come to your house, and what do you do? You see him there as the plumber. You see him there with all the relevant tools. What do you do? You welcome him in. You welcome him in as, as the plumber. You've got your need. You don't want to be cold in the winter. You want the plumber to come and sort everything out. And so you welcome him in gladly because he is the one who you hope is going to sort out your problem. The welcome is given. The receiving is given for the one for who he is to help you in your need. And that is truly what we have to think about as regards to our Lord Jesus Christ. We have to realize our need. You don't call the plumber any old day, so to speak. You call the plumber when there is a need. And we need to realize we have a need. We need help. We need help for now. We need help for eternity. We need a savior. We need one who will bring light and life into our lives which are often so directionless and hopeless, aren't they? And particularly in the light of eternity, we need help so that we can escape from the wrath to come and find an eternal life. This is the great message of Christmas, the great message of Christianity. Jesus Christ didn't accidentally turn up on earth. He came on a mission. He was given the name Jesus because he would save us from our sins so we need to realize our need to welcome him as the savior that's who he is the one to help us rest us change us transform us renew us everything that's good can i just say the lord jesus came into the world to do good and bring blessing i say to you you receive the lord jesus and you're guaranteed that it's going to be better because it's always better with the one who is our creator in our lives, changing us into the good way. Can I just say that we need to receive the Lord Jesus fully into our lives? Some of us think that we can have the Lord Jesus as kind of a lodger. You know, a lodger, what do we do with a, a lodger in our houses? We've got a lodger in our houses. We, we perhaps put them in a, 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 the attic room or one of the rooms in the house, and that is their territory. They're in our house, but they're just limited to a certain part of our house. We do not want to have them fully in our houses. And some of us are like that concerning the Lord Jesus Christ. We just want him to be sort of occupying perhaps a little part of the year or a little part of our lives. Ah, but the call of the one who is the Lord God, who reveals God, the call of the one who is the light, is that he would take over our lives. Does that make you fearful? Oh, please don't. <laughs> who do you want to be in control? Dare I say, in many ways, the worst thing we can have in our lives, the worst person we can have in our lives to be in control is ourselves. It's when we release control to God and the Lord Jesus. That's when we really find life. Christianity is not just having a makeover. It's about a takeover, a glorious takeover, a takeover which releases us into life. So what do we need to happen this Christmas season, we need 
to receive the Lord Jesus. And so we read in the passage that we've read, it says that in verse 12, but to all who did receive him, who believed in his name. They completely accepted him for who he was and who he is. And we say, we want, we want that. We want him. Reception, believing. Believing in his name is accepting him fully and truly for who he is in totality and saying he is the one. Lord Jesus, I want it all to be different now. You have died to save me from my sins. Please, please, please take me into your life that I might have life. Urge you to do. And what's the outcome? If we say what needs to happen this Christmas season, we need to receive him, believing in him. Then what's the outcome? What's the outcome? And the outcome is there at the end of verse 12, when the scripture says that those who receive him, he gave the right to become children of God. Now, many of us would go through processes in the course of life where we have to produce certain papers. Perhaps for some of you, it has been in order to establish your situation in a country. Perhaps it's in order to prove that you've got the right qualifications for a job. Whatever it is, you have to produce the things that would show that you have the right qualifications or the right basis for getting into a certain situation. Well, that's something of the implication here. The Lord Jesus said, what I want to see is you receive me. You believe in me. You give everything to me. Then you have the right to become children of God. In applying for uh, status in a country, when somebody has received everything and processed everything, they might say, you now have the right to be a British citizen. You've got all the stuff that you need. Well, here it is. You have the right to be a child of God in the family of God. We're not all naturally children of God. It's only when we come to receive Jesus Christ that we become children of God in the greatest family, the family of God with all others who have done similarly receive Jesus Christ. Oh, this is good news. It's what Jesus says he will do. He will say, you're in my family. We receive him. Receive him. Be finished with all your barriers that are holding you back. Come into this beautiful life. So, what do we need to happen this Christmas season? We need to receive Jesus Christ. What, what happens when that happens? The outcome is that we are children of God. Amazing privilege. Well, how does it all happen? How does it all happen? Explain a few bit of the mechanics of it. Well, verse 13 gives a little bit of the explanation you see as human beings we all we all sort of think we want a part of it we want to contribute something to our making ourselves to be for god well let's see what it says in verse 13 something of how this happens what does it say in verse 13 it says who were born not of blood not of the will of the flesh nor of the will of man they came into this situation of being into the family, in the family. They were born into this family, the special birth that comes from God, not because of their connections, you know, who they are in life, not because of blood, not because of the will of the flesh, not because of what they can do, not because of the will of man, not because of what others can do, but it is God. God comes and does this. We just say, Lord, God, I want this to happen to me. I want my life to be changed. I want it all to be better. And your connections won't bring it about. And your own initiative won't bring it about. And 
Other people can't bring it about, only God. Now, sometimes we'll have been uh, in a situation where we're in a, a big traffic jam. Happened to me several times, one or two on the motorways. I remember where you were just stuck for a seriously long time. And one of the things that strikes you when you're in a big traffic jam like that, normally because there's been a big accident ahead is, regardless of whatever car you're in, you're all in the same position. You're all in a jam and you, and you are stuck. You may have, one may have a nicer car than the other, but we're all in the same basic situation. And that's what it's like as regards to our situation before God. We're all in the same situation and we all need God to come and change that situation. We're all in desperate need. But Christmas is a time which tells us God has come. The Lord Jesus has been given really, truly. He is God who has come from God to take mankind into his being so that he might bring mankind, men, women, children, you in Feltham at this time, you wherever you are. There is the offer. So come. Don't look to yourself, cry out to God. And when you receive the Lord Jesus Christ into your life, then you have life. You are a child of God in the family of God. Oh, that is great good news this Christmas season. And I trust that is meaningful to you. I want it to be something that really comes into the heart of your life. Please think about these things. Please get in touch with us. We want to help everyone on their journey to come to God through Jesus and then to go on for God through our Lord Jesus. Our prayer is that the people of Felton would really want to know Jesus Christ. The final, the last carol we saw, sang said, where meek souls will receive him still. The dear Christ enters in. And that is the same today as it has been through history. December 20th, 2020, where you have a lowly spirit wanting help from God through Jesus. He will come in and he will change things for good for you and forever. And surely that's good news. At a time of lots of bad news. Thank you. Thanks for listening. I'm going to sing about joy to the world now. This is going to be our final carol. Joy to the world. The Lord has come. Everything can be so different now. So let us sing in the format that we've established this evening at home. Please sing out. But please take note of the words of this Carol. Just waiting for the carol to come up as we would be drawing towards the end of our service together uh, this evening time. As I say, Feltham Evangelical Church is here in the centre of Feltham and we would want to be uh, helping you, being here for you and now and as we would enter God willing into 2021, we'd want to be those who would be the means of helping the people of Feltham at this time. I don't think we're going to be able to have our, our final carol uh, at the moment, so uh, we'll uh, draw things to a conclusion now. And we are just so glad that you've been able to uh, join with us. It's been special to have you along this, this evening. 
And uh, please think about the things that we have considered together and this whole issue of receiving the Lord Jesus into our lives. I'm going to pray and then we'll bring our service to an end. Thank you. Let's pray together. Our Father, we are glad to praise you this evening time. We thank you that you are our God. You are the God who rules and reigns on high. Help us to appreciate your way. Help us to appreciate that your, your focus is in your son and in bringing people home to glory with you forever. Oh, be gracious to us this Christmas season, we do pray. We thank you for this evening time to be together. And now we give ourselves to you for this Christmas season of all of our situations at home, in our families, in our communities. We trust the blessing of the Lord flowing into our lives and beyond as we do pray and give ourselves to you now in the Lord Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Actually, we've got our final carol. So if you just want to hold on, you can join in and, and sing joy to the world. Thanks for being with us. May God truly bless you this Christmas season. I'm Philip Venables. I'm pastor of Feltham Evangelical Church. And on behalf of the church, I wish you a very happy Christmas. And I wish you all that is good into 2021. Thank you.